today. I've come back to Dartmoor today to have a look at an old mine. Um, first of all, though, I've got to walk up this path. It's been so wet on Dartmoor the last, well, in Devon really, for the last few weeks. It's actually turned into a river. So um, it's going to be pretty wet walking up there. Uh, I don't don't know much about it. It's called Will Betty. It's quite a kind of popular, famous one. It's on the map and all that. Um, you just about see it uh, there between the um, between the gauze and the bracken and stuff like that. Um, it's quite an overcast day. There's not much interest in the sky. Um, the only thing going with it, we've got a bit of kind of cloud over this way behind me, so um, might be able to make it work. Might be able to get a bit of interest in it. Um, so I'll meet you up there and see what we can get. house or the engine house you can see a lot of the remains of the old quarry here if you look down this way you've got kind of where the road is and the river is you've got a lot of um quarry or stone beside the road um lots of spoil heaps over here and stuff like that um by magic of this um plaque here that they've nicely put on i shall read you some history of the uh the mine so Basically, it, it's a silver lead mine. Uh, it was reopened in 1806 and worked successfully for the next 70 years. The mine was worked by water power. I'm sure I've seen pictures of the water wheel down here as well, but I don't think I've time to find it today. Um, until 1868, when this building was erected to house a Cornish beam pumping engine. It was closed in 1877. It was all done by steam power, and then in 1967 the National Park took it on and made it safe. So there you go, that's the history. Uh, I really love old things like this because it's old industry and at one point it would have kind of brought employees and kind of given work to the local area. And what I really like about old industrial things like this is the buildings and the structures so unique because they they were built with local built with local materials like a lot of old buildings were um but you quite often can have similar things less than 10 miles away and they're made of totally different materials or totally kind of different types of stone or things like that because it's all just made what they could dig out the ground locally um yeah quite cool um i'm gonna try and get some compositions of it probably looking down this way uh, like I said before, oh, if this comes back down, just because um, it's better, better kind of clouds down that way. This way is a bit kind of overcast, really. There's not too much interest in it. Um, yeah, anyway, let's go and have a look, see if you can get inside it. I expect if I wandered around, you'd probably see a few more of these stacks because the actual stacks were kind of built to get ventilation and air down into the, the mine. Um, and the structures like this were actually built to house kind of the actual um, the engines themselves for the water pumps, stuff like that. So um, these were kind of the, the engine houses and the stacks. If you just see a stack on its own, they're generally just to kind of get um, the air down into the shafts and sorry, into the mines, which are obviously tunnels under the ground. Um, I mean, that's what it looks like inside. It looks like they're filled in. If there's a hole there, they've filled it in. You can see bubble down there. Um, yeah, so this would have been filled with a steam steam engine at one point, and it was just literally a pumping house. It was just to pump the water out of the mine, stop it filling with water. So that's all it was. Um, yeah, I don't know where the water wheel went. I don't know if it sat down here at one point or something like that. It's hard to say, really. It's probably long gone now but um yeah i'll have a look if i find any old pictures on the internet the uh, creative commons and stuff like that 
of it when it did have a water wheel. I'll stick them up just out of interest, but now I'm gonna uh, go and get set up and see what shots I can get. Well, apologies for the bad hair day. Uh, I got wet earlier and I've been wearing a baseball cap, so uh, yeah, it's not the best. Um, got the first shot set up, simple shot. Um, having the pumping house to the right of the scene. Um, got a bit of this road in here, um, which should come out quite nicely because it's going to be catching a lot of the light. It's quite reflective and it's because it's been raining today, it's got a lot of water on it. So it, it means it reflects quite a lot of the, um, quite a lot of the uh, sun or the light. Um, I'm doing a long exposure. Um, the clouds are moving quite quickly. They're kind of going the wrong way. They're going to the left, which it'll kind of look nice, but it'd be nice if they were kind of coming towards the kind of the peak or the stack. Or kind of going away from it because it give these kind of leading lines towards it um, but I might be able to get that set up with a different composition um, yeah real simple shot there's not too much color in the scene so it might even be a black and white this one um, um, already done the shot already yeah it's a bit hard to get some of the definition out so I'll probably put a soft grab filter on that as well just to bring the sky down um, so you can see a bit more colors and a bit more contrast and detail in the sky um, yeah, kind of do this shot and move somewhere else, get another shot. I'm shooting with a Lee 10 stop um, hard grad, uh, sorry, 10 stop ND filter. Um, it's a square filter. I already had the square filter system because I shoot with um, the 150 to 100, 150 wide, 100 mil um, soft grad, hard grad um, filters. I used to use high tech and I just broke it, so I kind of bought Lee ones, but high tech's pretty good as well there's not much in them really um i used to use round filters those screw on filters there's nothing wrong with screw on filters they're great but i got to a point where sometimes i couldn't get them off i used to do them up too tight or they get stuck on um and if i can find it um which i did have it earlier here it is this is what happened to the last one basically it got stuck on and um I don't know where you can see that, but my only way to get it off was to get a pair of pliers and just gouge it off. There's nothing technically wrong with this filter. It's really good. It has very little cast in it. Um, it's glass. It was only about 15 quid. I've had this for years and it's been great, but when you can't get a filter off and it's getting dark and you're just having to do like shooting at ISO 1000 because you can't get the damn thing off, it really frustrates you. So. Although these square filters are expensive, they will work with loads of different lenses and you don't have to worry about getting them stuck on. So anyway, I'll set up, do a few different shots here, try and get the sky how I want it. I'll catch up with you in a different composition in a minute. Right, I found a different composition now. I'm a bit far up to the main road. You can probably hear the road noise. Um, yeah, I'm basically shooting a vertical shot now, or portrait shot. Um, basically, I'm just focusing mainly almost with the, the engine house in the centre. Um, still getting a bit of the road in, um, just to kind of include it in the scene. What I'm liking about this scene is there's a lot of um, detail. Uh, don't know if I can get it to expose to that. Uh, there's a lot of details you can see there in the sky so all i'm trying to do is i'm using a 0.9 soft grad filter which is darkening the top of the stack um, and also there's a i just know there's a bit of a bend in the stack which is going to annoy me because i'm not it's going to struggle getting it straight in the picture um i'll probably have to leave it but it will kind of make the image look a bit skewed as it's taking it um but yeah back to the sky sorry um basically i'm using a 0.9 soft grad nd filter um, a Lee one just to bring the sky down. I want to try and get as much mood and detail in that sky as I can because without that, the shot is not really worth taking. Um, the light's not great. It's a bit kind of backlit, so this side of the the um, the engine house is quite dark. Um, if it wasn't for the sky and the clouds, it probably wouldn't be worth taking. So I'm using a uh, ten-stop filter to give me a bit more of a long exposure and I'm using a 0.9 soft grad to bring the sky down and with a bit of post work 
with some graduated filters in Photoshop. I should be able to bring that down really nicely in the sky and give this really moody scene. So that's what I'm kind of shooting for, aiming for, I think, with this location. Um, yeah, shots coming out okay on the back of the camera. Um, this is kind of what I'm, I'm going for. There you go, it's with the sky there. You can see it's kind of bringing it down slightly in the, on the back of the camera, but it's not, it's not too much. It won't be until I get on, on post and kind of bring that down, the, the true colours will come out of it. Um, yeah, I'm shooting at quite a high ISO on this one. Um, shooting at ISO 500. Well, that's really too high, really. I, I want to more be like ISO 100, but um, I've only got 10 stop filter. And that's given me an exposure time at ISO 100. It's given me exposure time of about a minute. So 200 is half a minute. It's still too long with that exposure. Because the clouds are moving quite quickly and it's quite an overcast day. It's removing all of the detail from the sky. I don't want that. So I'm using the ISO to control it and get the shutter speed down to around about eight seconds, um, which will give it some smoothness, um, give it a bit of like kind of surreal look to the sky but it'll allow it to maintain a lot of the detail in it without getting washed out into like a, a smooth kind of overcast look. Um, so it's not ideal. In an ideal world, I'd have a six stop filter on there, um, like a Lee um, little stopper or something like that, um, which I will get in the future. But for the time being, this is a full frame camera. It can deal with ISOs up to 500, not too bad. It's not gonna have too much noise in it. Um, Noise isn't necessarily a bad thing if you've got moody textured skies anyway because it kind of adds a bit of a, like a 3D look to it. If, if it's really smooth and no noise, sometimes it can look a bit HDR-y and like there's no detail in the sky. So it's not the end of the world. Um, like I said, I'm getting a shutter speed of about six second, um, eight seconds. ISO 500. Um, I'm shooting on the 24 to 105 L lens from Canon and I'm shooting around about 55 uh, millimeter at the moment. stack is so bent though whatever picture you took of this people are going to think your lens is distorted it because it's so you have a look at that Let's pan up look how bent that is that's not this camera doing it either that's um proper on the wonky so um you can tell this one built by brunel was it uh yeah that's about it now from the scene really um the cloud's kind of still here, you still probably get some moody shots, but I can't really think of much else to do with it, really. Um, it'd be nice if there's some sunbeams coming down. Probably look quite cool, but I think that's probably about all I can do from it, really. So uh, it's a shame it isn't like it used to be with the, um, uh, with the water wheel here and stuff like that. It would look really cool. Like I say, I'll hopefully I'll find an image and chuck it up. You've probably seen it already now anyway, but yeah, definitely recommend coming in here. It's um, a cool part of the moors. You've got um, Brentor Church, um, not far either. Um, Willsworthy, you've got Tavi, Cleve, which I want to do a wild camp at some point and get down there. <coughs> Might be something for the future in the summer. Um, there's a few little waterfalls there and streams you can get nice pictures of and some of the tours are quite cool around there, Sharp Tour and stuff like that. Um, yeah, High Will Haze as well. The highest point on Dartmoor is only a few miles kind of that way um, that's one for the future I haven't been there either but uh, yeah this is kind of this part of the moors really it's really nice and rugged um, we're not far from Lidford at the moment so yeah if you fancy checking it out make your way up so this is Wheel Betty all right I'll uh, see you in the future hope you enjoyed it if you uh, like it please um, hit, hit the thumbs up and subscribe as usual and um, I'll see you again in the future Thank you.